I'm Tristan with Mahalo, and we are here at Hip Cooks in West LA, and today we are talking about stuffing, and I'm going to show you how to make it. Um, let's get started talking about the breadcrumbs, an important part of stuffing, of course. I've chosen today just to use sourdough, and this is one of the elements of stuffing that you can change to make your own. Sourdough is a nice uh, basic white bread dough that makes um, for great stuffing. Homemade breadcrumbs. Easily tear apart a loaf like I've done here, just in big chunks like this, and then it goes into the oven to toast them and dry them out. So you can kind of hear they're nice and dry, and they're going to absorb the butter and the broth really well. If you like more of the uniform look of breadcrumbs, you can take your loaf, grocery store loaf easily, and just take out pieces at a time and cut them into squares. And that way you can have what may be to you a traditional looking stuffing filling, and then these get toasted as well. So um, that is our breadcrumbs, breadcrumbs 101. Um, melting one stick of butter, unsalted, we'll salt later. That salted butter tends to have additional saline in it. It's not the freshest, not the best choice. I'm gonna scrape off, you don't wanna waste a thing. Some recipes might call for one and a half. I tend to get it to about one stick, and we're thinking about um, serving for 10 to 12 people and going in a turkey that's about 12 pounds to 14 pounds. So as this melts on medium heat, uh, let's talk about what goes into this traditional stuffing. Celery, mushrooms, onions, and then herbs of your choice. Today I had some fresh sage out of my garden, so that's what I'm choosing to use. If you don't have access to fresh herbs, you can use dry herbs, just the same. And then fresh parsley was in my garden as well, so I've pre-chopped that, and that will nicely um, add some great color and flavor to our stuffing. For this stuffing, I have chopped one onion, which is about two cups. And I will dump this into the butter and get that browning. Celery as well. It's good to leave those leaves on your celery stock because these add a, ni add a nice flavor. And celery is great because it adds a earthy, nutty flavor to your stuffing. So slice down the middle. Make these pieces little. Honestly, when you bite into stuffing, you don't want to taste like a big crunch of celery. So you want to make them fine and slice away into little pieces. So this is our celery here. And that is about one cup of celery, or four stalks. This is really approximate. If you want to go with specific amounts, that's fine. If you don't like celery, cut back on the celery. If you really like celery, add celery. If you don't like yellow onions, use white onions. Um, it's really all going to come out the same. Mushrooms, to add a nice nutty, meaty flavor. Uh, keep the stalks with the mushroom, because those tend to have the most flavor. Uh, the, the head of the mushroom has good flavor, but the stalks are pretty meaty and add that really distinct mushroom flavor. With all that in, we want to start absorbing the butter, getting them sauteed. I'll crank up the heat a little bit now. And just stir. Let it get going. You'll start to hear it sizzle. You'll start to see the brown, the, the um, onion soften up a bit. While I wait for the mixture here in the pot to soften up, I'm going to chop some sage. So an easy way to chop sage is to layer the leaves. And this is really similar for basil, too. You'll layer the leaves, stack the leaves, and then roll them up into a little roll, and then hold it and slice it down. And you end up with really nicely julienned bits of sage. For this, though, we do want our pieces to be smaller, so I'll give it a brief cut across here. So that the pieces are small. And you can estimate about one and a half teaspoons of sage. Just sprinkle that in. If you really love sage, add more sage. If you don't like sage, don't use sage. You can also use thyme, rosemary, but this is what I had in my garden, so this is what I've chosen to use. Parsley, an easy chop. I'd say a couple tablespoons. And this just adds a really nice flavor and color of freshness to the stuffing. With all that butter, it's nice to have a little bit of freshness with your stuffing. We have our seasoned turkey here and we are ready to stuff. So we'll stuff both ends. We'll stuff this end and this end down here and then tie it up so it fits neatly into the oven. I'm just gonna dig my hands on in there. 
And when you're stuffing, you want your bird to be room temperature and you want the stuffing to be room temperature. And again, when we're working with raw poultry, we just really want to be aware of the fact that um, it can carry bacteria. So if you have things at the right temperature, you can really avoid that. So don't pack it in. Just put it in there loosely. If you pack it in, it will not get as hot as you need. And again, you can get that salmonella. So pack loosely in to the edge here. And what I tend to do is then take a heel of the bread that we used for the stuffing and kind of fit it to the size of the cavity of the turkey. And that allows to create the closure so the stuffing won't fall out in the process. And it ends up being the best piece to eat when the bird comes out because it's just filled with yummy turkey fat. <laughs> so that end is done. I will tie up the wings. so that we can work the other end. So just a knot with some butcher string, twine is fine, whatever you have. Tie a knot on one leg. And the idea is to just get both of the legs pulled together, wrap it around the other one, pull it tight, wrap around the other, just a little knot to tie it. And then that will just snip off when the turkey's roasted. Okay. So flipping the bird around, we have another area up towards the neck where we can fill with stuffing. You generally can't get as much in here, but we can get probably a good handful that will be worth it in the end. You'll start to see that the, this extra skin will start to balloon a little bit, and that's when you know you're close to full. Okay. The extra skin at the end works well to be able to tuck it up in there. If you do have pins, you can pin it. Um, if you don't have pins, just make sure it's good and tucked, okay? So this bird is seasoned, it's stuffed. So we have the herbs in the pan that the roasted turkey, or that the turkey will sit on. And these herbs um, were also part of the stuffing. And so we kind of have this, this will create um, some additional aroma and also give a nice bed for the turkey to sit on. And that turkey is ready to roast. For roasting a turkey, see my roasting video. If you'd like to see me prepare any other dishes, please send an email to requestatmahalo.com. And in the meantime, check out all of our other awesome videos.